All right guys, so I've got an old double bedded ax right here. This thing has been knocking around in the dirt for like 50 years. There's no edge on this thing whatsoever. I can take it and just rub it uh, against my palm, run my thumb on it. There's no edge at all. So we're gonna take this old ax and bring this thing back to a good working edge. So since this is a double bitted axe, I'm gonna take one side and we're really gonna refine this edge and make that thing absolutely shave. I'm gonna see if I can't take and slice some paper with this old axe. The other side, I'm gonna not refine the edge quite so much. I'm gonna leave it a little bit toothy. It's still gonna be very sharp, but it's gonna be uh, taken to more of the stage where you would typically expect an axe to be sharpened to. I'm gonna be working with a very coarse tool and that's this big old mill file. I'm gonna use this just to get a rough edge on it and then we're gonna, just like with any other blade sharpening, I'm gonna work my way down through that coarseness until I get to a fairly fine stone. Now for the edge that we're gonna make shave, I'm gonna take that right on down to 600, 800 grit, and eventually to a ceramic and strop. And we're gonna see if we can't slice through some paper with this thing. And so we're gonna start just by kind of bringing, taking some of this roughness out of the edge and putting a, a, a coarse uh, edge on here. If you see right here, the sweep of this cutting edge changes a little bit. It looks like this got kind of broken off or nicked off right there. Maybe somebody hit a piece of concrete, so we're gonna have to um, work on that a little bit, kind of blend that back into this edge here. So there's a little bit of, there's some little dings right in here. So we're gonna have to get below all of that stuff. And you keep seeing me blow these metal shavings away from here. The reason I'm doing is that, that is because sometimes they can get down into the uh, grid work of your file and basically scar up the edge. And so you blow that stuff away, you reduce the risk of that. So what I'm feeling for here is on the opposite side that you're filing, you should eventually get a burr. And that's that very thin edge uh, on your blade that's starting to curl away from whatever you're sharpening with. So typically when you file from the blade out, you'll create a bigger burr than if you file from the outside towards the inside of the blade. And that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just something to know. Now on this ax, I can definitely feel that burr all the way on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this thing over and hopefully you can see that on the camera. All right, so on this ax head right along here, you should be able to see this as a giant burr right along the edge there. That's that very thin edge that you're creating when the file, the side that you're filing or, or honing meets the other side. So we'll go ahead and take this burr off, clean this edge up, and then we'll be ready to move on to a finer honing stone.
All right, so I've got both sides of both bits uh, cleaned up. I've got a good rough edge on here, and I'm gonna move to a smaller mill file, kind of clean this edge up, smooth it out just a little bit, get rid of this big giant burr on there, and then I'll start using a diamond stone on this thing. see this giant burr right in here. I'm gonna just take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the other edge. So for all practical uses, this ax is done. Unless you're gonna be carving with this ax, there's no practical reason to take it any farther than this. It's actually shaving with nothing more than a couple of files and I don't know, maybe five minutes worth of work from absolutely no edge at all. But because I like a challenge, I'm gonna go ahead and refine at least one of these edges to an absolute razor blade and see if we can't make this thing slice paper like you see all those fancy Japanese knives guys doing. Let's give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna look at this ax and pick out uh, what I think to be the best edge. It looks like this one's got a really nice smooth arc. This one's a little bit, got kind of a, a little bit of a flat spot right in here. So we'll go to this uh, better, more uniform edge and just refine this down a little bit. Now what I'm going to be using is this uh, Work Sharp Field Sharpener. I carry this in my backpack all the time. On this thing I've got uh, a relatively coarse grit, looks like maybe a 320 or so, a fine grit over here, maybe a six or 800 grit. I've got a ceramic and then a little piece of leather uh, for stropping. So I'm going to start with this coarser side right here. We're going to raise another burr on this thing, a smaller burr this time. And then we're gonna to come to the other side, take that off, and then move on to our um, finer honing stone. Just gonna prop it up on a piece of wood like that so that I can maintain my bevel. And I'll start working with the coarser side of this. So I can feel the burr everywhere except right back here. move to my finer grit.
was the ceramic. And finally we'll hit it with a little bit of a strop. Always going away from the edge when you're stropping. So we're about ready to test this axe on just a piece of printer paper. Now before we do that, I want to just briefly talk about the challenges of doing this with an axe and why it's more difficult to do it with an axe than it is with a knife. Now I've got two different knives here. I've got a fillet knife and just a cheap cuisine art kitchen knife. I've sharpened both of these knives to a 17 degree bevel, which is pretty typical for kitchen knives. Now, the big difference between this and this is not necessarily the sharpness of the edge because they're both very sharp, but it's what comes behind the edge. On a kitchen knife, you've really they're very, very thin. You really don't have much back there and even more so on a fillet knife. This thing has got a very sharp edge and it just sweeps back to not a lot of meat back here on the spine. On an ax, on the other hand, once you get beyond the cutting edge, it just gets really fat. Also, the, the edges on a chopping tool like this or your cutting edge tends to be much more obtuse or much steeper angles. Um, and the reason that comes into play when you're slicing something is because once you get beyond that cutting edge, there's just a lot of steel back here that has to displace stuff. If you're slicing the tomato, it has to push the tomato apart. If you're slicing paper, you got more paper to push apart. And so there's more friction back here in the back of the blade. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this piece of paper and show you with this. Again, this is just a cheap kitchen knife that I got out of the drawer. Uh, it was very dull when I started. My wife is a professional knife duller. She likes to try to saw ceramic plates in half with knives, but with a little bit of good technique, you should be able to very easily cut paper. Again, this is a fillet knife. This is what we're after. Ooh, not like that. All right, so big, thick, heavy axe. Find out which one I sharpened. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can cut this paper. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Not bad. Definitely not what we're getting with the kitchen knives, but that was just a screw up. Definitely making some good cuts. Now let's try the other one that we just rough cut in with the, uh, the files. Not really happening on that one. But again, you don't need to shave. You don't need to cut paper to fell a tree. All right, so there you go. We took this old rusty uh, double bitted ax with no edge whatsoever. And in just a few minutes, took that thing to an absolute razor blade of an edge. Now, like I said earlier, this unless you're carving with the ax, which you wouldn't really be carving with an ax like this, um, there's no reason to take an ax to a razor edge like this unless you just want to demonstrate techniques. Um, having them to just a kind of a toothy, rough, sharp edge like I took it to with that file, it'll still shave, but that's going to be a much better edge for a, a chopping tool like this, and that's all you really need to do. But um, it goes to show you, you can take a really kind of old, rusty steel like this, get it razor sharp with the proper techniques and the biggest things the biggest takeaway from this is number one you need to get to where you can hold a consistent bevel on this thing and then number two get to where you can identify or first create and then identify that burr and then take that burr off and that's when you really start honing in on your sharpening technique so i hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one